Hello, my name is Cindy Wiley. I'm a PhD student in HCI from the Graphic Design Department, and I like cats. I gave a similar presentation to the Design and Ethics class on Friday, so I apologize for the rerun to some of you. Prior to graduate school, I worked as a creative director for a nutritional supplement company named Nutraceutics in my hometown of St. Louis. I attended the University of Missouri Columbia and received a BA in art. At Nutraceutics, I was responsible for both creating design work as well as managing a team of designers. I learned quite a bit about the business world, how to play nicely with others, including the sales and marketing people. The work that I was doing was unchallenging and used negative stereotypes to sell products. This is not a new or different advertising model. It's a model that is currently used by an overwhelming majority of companies. The company I worked for manufactured an assortment of vanity products from weight loss to anti-aging supplements. Parodies of the advertising industry have become an accepted part of US American subculture. For over 30 years, Saturday Night Live, an NBC TV show that parodies social aesthetics in US American society, has perfected the model of poking fun at taboo topics that began to appear in the form of print advertising during the Industrial Revolution. These topics are often comprised of sex, subjection of women, and basic human bodily functions. The question is whether parodies increase awareness and activism surrounding the use of stereotypes in the advertising industry, or if they do more harm by providing license to laugh. During my time at Nutraceutics, I questioned everything. I kept coming back to the same question. What can we as designers do to break out of this obedient, neutral, servant to industry mentality and not be a pencil that somebody else pushes? Then I read the First Things First manifesto, first published in 1964 by Ken Garland. The part that was most significant to me, and I'm quoting, Commercial work has always paid the bills, but many graphic designers have now let it become, in large measure, what graphic designers do. This, in turn, is how the world perceives design. The profession's time and energy is used up manufacturing demand for things that are inessential at best. I'll say that again. The profession's time and energy is used up manufacturing demand for things that are inessential at best. This gave me hope and basis for the industry. Most of the items that we use on a daily basis, from shaving cream to feminine deodorant products to pet food, are entirely fabricated industries that prey off of our manufactured demands. The marketers and advertisers use persuasion and deception as their techniques to convince us that dogs and cats want to eat dry, overprocessed chicken butts, guts, and assholes, and that women have smelly vaginas. One of the prime examples of this type of niche marketing creation as a manufactured demand is the Project Vagisil. On this package, it says, new with odor block protection, helps keep odors from happening. Vagisil products are located in their own dedicated feminine products section, away from the other types of cleansers, soaps, and personal care items, and mixed in with the pads and the tampons. At the Hy-Vee where I shop, this section is tucked away in the back corner of the store hidden from unsuspecting men that don't ever want to wander down that aisle. I recently watched a parody of the Vagisil advertising on South Park. Cartman, who is one of the main characters, consumes Vagisil after viewing an ad that listed a side effect of short-term memory loss so that he can become stupid enough to drive NASCAR. It's a long story. Anyway, in this episode, he is visited by Vagisil founder Jeff Hamill and his wife Patty where Jeff describes her as his muse, his flame. Patty is the reason he created Vagisil, and he states that Patty's smile can light up a room. Her vagina, on the other hand, clears it out and makes it uninhabitable for weeks. But getting back to the question of whether ad parodies raise awareness and activism, or do more harm by providing license to laugh, my contention is that they point out the ridiculous nature of inessential products the majority of which are geared towards so-called feminine care. Personally, I think they're hysterical. I just wish more groups were represented so that we can make fun of more inessential products. I believe that is my five minutes. Thank you very much.